And here we go again. I hope the lighting is okay. <clears throat> okay, we we're supposed to wait a few seconds. Somebody told me that, but nonetheless. Hi there. Welcome, everybody, to what we call Cast Iron Wednesday. That is here on Wednesday evenings. A lot of uh, cooking channels on here on YouTube, not including mine, uh, do a uh, cast iron video where usually they are either cooking in cast iron or having fun uh, identifying or cleaning or restoring cast iron or the like. Uh, in my case, yeah, I do cooking, and I've been foolish enough to uh, do uh, do this live because after all, you know, doing a uh, cooking live video, I mean, what could possibly go wrong? So, and somehow I've managed to uh, do this for uh, somewhat more than two years now and people are actually kind enough to show up uh, here on YouTube Live and I can only thank everybody so much for that. I mean, it's a lot of fun to do this and uh, having folks here uh, participating in the uh, live chat really certainly helps to make this even more fun. So at least I think so. So I can only say hi to everybody. Uh, hello to uh, Corey Clark and uh, William Hurts and Cynthia Wesley. A lot of uh, familiar faces show up here and I'm uh, so glad to see that. Uh, I think I'm going to change this, in fact, slightly. Instead of top chat, let's do live chat so that it supposedly shows all the messages here. So, um, again, uh, thank you so much. But, uh, yes, um, <clears throat> yeah, I hope there wasn't any confusion. I mean, I know I actually, uh, a couple of hours ago, I had to remove the... Uh, uh, this uh, live video and recreate another one. That's and the story behind that one. Well, actually, I think I'll start getting ready here uh, before I uh, get into detail. Because rather than just stand here and talk, I mean, we're here to play with cast iron, and I certainly hope we cert we have some uh, going. I've got uh, heating up on the stove right here, for instance, my good old trusty uh, number eight Birmingham Stove and Rage Red Mountain skillet. Uh, that is. Uh, going to be for uh, doing the apple pie filling because, um, yeah, not only am I foolish enough to try cooking live, but I'm even going to uh, try doing something a little bit different, although it's, um, I'm, I've no doubt that there's not going to be any difficulty with this. Uh, because, yeah, we're doing apple pie tonight. Normally, of course, as you know, we uh, prepare our uh, apple pie filling, dump it into the crust, and bake it, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I wanted to try uh, pre-cooking the uh, apple pie filling before putting it into the uh, into the uh, pan, which gives another excuse to uh, play with cast iron. And anyway, uh, fried apple uh, pie filling is certainly uh, nothing to complain about. Meanwhile, as for the pie itself, we've got our, um, I've shown this one off before. I've had this now for good grief, at least a year, maybe going on two years or so. This is the uh, Lodge uh, Pie Plate, which they uh, is uh, relatively new still in our, uh, in uh, from Lodge. Uh, they produced their bakeware series about two years or so ago. And up until that point, they did not have an official cast iron pie plate. I made sure to grab one, and boy, yeah, um, making cast making a pie in cast iron is simply about the best way to do it. Whether you use it in a skillet or uh, in a cast iron pie plate like this, uh, Val's Black Cat rules: the pie won't sink as much. Oh yeah, there is that pre-cooking the uh, pie filling. So there's definitely uh, an advantage to that, and so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let me see. Since I've got, that means I've got a little bit of preparation to do before we can get this uh, into the pan here. I hope this, I hope I have this thing heating up hot enough. <laughs> yeah, gas stove, I don't think there's too much worry about that. But, got to move over a little bit to my rather cluttered workstation, unfortunately. So, um, okay, now, the recipe that I'm using is from a site called Delicious Table, which uh, has to do with uh, pre-cooking your uh, pie filling. Um, so let's move this over a little bit to give a uh, decent view here. The first thing I'm supposed to do is a slurry of about a quarter cup of uh, lemon juice and mix in, uh, it says here, one tablespoon of cornstarch. This is the thickener 
that will be used to uh, on the pie when you uh, when it bakes so that the filling won't be running. Yeah, that's another advantage, they say, of, uh, of uh, pre-cooking the crust. And that, uh, again, the pie won't, won't be running either. So I'm looking forward to giving this a try. I mean, I have made a number of uh, apple pies. Oh, good. The oven's preheated. I've made a number of apple pies. They're actually easy to make, and I really enjoy doing them, and they've turned out wonderful, quite frankly. Um, so, uh, but nonetheless, I have had some of the problems that other folks have had. Here is a tablespoon of cornstarch, which we're mixing in right now with the, um, with the lemon juice. You gotta be careful with cornstarch. You know, you spill one grain of cornstarch and it gets all over the place. So, anyway, that we will come back to. Meanwhile, let's close this up as well so that I don't spill any of this cornstarch. And having done that, now comes the easy part. Which means I get to uh, front, get to uh, pull out the cast iron here. Actually, first I have to pull out the apples. So uh, here they are. Uh, this was an excuse to use my uh, favorite unitasker. I've got this apple. I've got this uh, apple peeler corer. Uh, thingy here that my parents gave me several years ago and as far as unitaskers go this one uh, is uh, probably one of my favorites you know basically it cores and peels apples and really does nothing else maybe the fact that it cores and peels apples means you can't call it a unitasker because it actually does two things at once <laughs> but nonetheless it really does the job done gets the job done when, as far as uh, cooking up uh, as far as uh, preparing apples goes um, let me see. Meanwhile, Terry sent you no, Peg 2. There are countless videos on YouTube. I recommend Cody's Lab because he's honest. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, for beekeeping. Uh, when did you get the PM I sent you? Well, okay, yeah. Hello, Papa Dan. Again, I'm glad to see everybody is, uh, doing okay, uh, including Papa Dan. So, Granny Smiths don't need much thickening, not as juicy. Well, my hope is that uh, this doing this will also help uh, keep the uh, apples uh, good and moist. So that means now we have our chance to uh, get some to uh, start playing with some cast iron here. Which means once again, as I said, this is uh, again this is my uh, Red Mountain number eight cast iron skillet. I mean, this is definitely you gotta watch the flame here. Definitely one of my favorite workhorses in the kitchen here. Uh, I've gotten a lot of use out of this, and I hope to keep getting use out of this for the rest of my life. Anyway, what all I'm supposed to do at first is simply start uh, cooking the uh, apples in butter. And I certainly have no complaint about that, except uh, did I forget my spatula? Oh, good grief. Excuse me, I gotta reach over and get my spatula. Okay, there it is. <sighs> yeah, unfortunately, it's a metal spatula. Sorry to say. I hope this isn't up too high. I think this is because I really don't want to burn this uh, butter here, and especially don't want to burn the apple. So, I also don't want the smoke detector to go off. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still having that trouble even in my new kitchen, unfortunately, but I guess that's inevitable. Uh, as you say, if uh, half of your uh, recipes include the step blow, blow away the smoke from the smoke detector, then you must, then you might have half turn item. Nonetheless, we've got our uh, butter here, so now here comes the apples. I hope to great. I'm realizing maybe I should have actually used a larger pan. This is a 10 inch pan. Well, all we can do is uh, make it work. So just a little light now. Nonetheless, with any luck, these things may very well shrink uh, as they cook. So hopefully this shouldn't be uh, too bad here. 
Um, I pour, as I mentioned, only about uh, half an hour going on 45 minutes or so ago, I uh, peeled and uh, cored these apples using that little unit caster thingy. Yeah I, yeah, I know the name of it. I think it is just simply an apple core. But uh, ever, since I've, uh, ever since I received it as a present, I've always just called it my apple core peeler thingy. Once I did try using it on potato, and it really didn't work that well, I'm afraid. So at this point, there's really still no use for it other than uh, preparing apples. But that's okay, because uh, as I mentioned, it's really useful for uh, preparing, well, just that. Uh, if you like making apple pies, and it's around this time of the year, who doesn't, then this is certainly uh, worth it. Wow, in fact, all of those cold apples have probably reduced the temperature in the pan, so I guess I'm actually not doing too bad. In fact, maybe I need to turn up the heat only a very slight amount here. I can still hear, still hear it, so with any luck, these things are cooking. But as I said, oops, oh great, there goes one apple piece. Oh well, I know the cats will eat that. Um, as I mentioned, this is my number eight BSR Red Mountain uh, skillet, which is, again is one of my favorite kitchen workhorses. Yeah, I think these things are starting to shrink already. And I realized, even as I was putting this out, that I'm starting to approach the 10th anniversary of quite a few of the pans I have in my kitchen. I don't recall if I got this in the year 2012 or maybe 2013. I'm betting it may very well have been 2012, though. What I do remember is that this pan was an eBay score because back in those days, back in those days, about 10 years ago, in fact, well, man, things have changed in the past 10 years, haven't they? Back then, uh, BSR was unknown on eBay, for starters, burning and Stolen Range. And, and there were quite a few pans on uh, eBay, cast iron pans on eBay that were simply marked as made in USA or unknown cast iron pan because they, the sellers didn't know what they uh, had, which meant, of course, they were selling for lower prices. And back then, it was actually possible to uh, score a decent price on a uh, BSR pan on eBay, which is exactly what I did. I uh, I don't remember the price I paid for this thing, but I don't think it was very expensive. I doubt I paid more than, including shipping, I don't think I paid more than 20 25 for this. And I know, as compared to finding a uh, Red Mountain pan at a flea market, which you can often still do these days, uh, I still didn't think that was a bad price because I was looking specifically for a Red Mountain pan in the number eight size. And I have been using this thing practically nonstop ever since. And definitely recommend it. It's, it's everything you might want. Oh, here goes another piece. Everything you might want in a uh, cast iron skillet. Um, it's thick, it's heavy, it's really smooth, too. People who don't like the uh, modern surface of lodge cast iron pans, which I don't mind at all, but if you want something smooth, of course, you know, vintage BSR is uh, a, a one of the best things you can get. And so, really, it's like anybody who finds a uh, Red Mountain uh, pan, they are not likely to uh, get rid of it. Not unless they're an antique seller uh, and intentionally want to sell it. Nonetheless, while I'm waiting, let's see here. Yep, there goes an apple. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My bad. Well, fortunately, we have enough to spare here. So, uh, bag of Cheetos. No, I don't think I'll add Cheetos to this pie. Um, <laughs> you can screen and eat this pie. Well, I've only just started, but I hope it, it uh, turns out that well. Ten years is back in those days. Yeah, I know. Welcome to the internet, where ten years is practically an eternity, it seems like. So many things have changed in the past ten years. Some for the better, some not for the better. Um, but that's how it is. <laughs> um, ten years ago, well, yeah, we still had even things like Facebook ten years ago, unfortunately. 
Um, we didn't have TikTok back then. We still had YouTube. Um, in fact, it was the, uh, I guess you could say, the flowering of YouTube. That's when YouTube was really taking off. Um, I was only starting to uh, produce uh, videos myself. Good grief. My oldest cast iron videos are about nine going on ten years old. Sheesh. And yeah, actually, these apples are shrinking, so I don't think I'm doing too badly here. So we're off to a not bad start. Um, I, I better see if this uh, recipe says I should drain the liquid from this or not. I mean, if I do, I mean, this is a tasty liquid. It's apple juice plus butter. So I'm certainly not going to uh, complain about that. Um, uh, like my, yeah, hey, Dave. Uh, hello. Hello, Dave Evely or Evely. I never could pronounce that. So. I need some homemade apple butter. You should remake some of your classics. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually thinking of that, especially when I realized, um, what was I doing the other day? Or was it last week? It, was, it had been 10 years uh, since I made at least a couple of these things. So yeah, I definitely want to uh, redo some of my uh, older videos. No question about that. An apple pie probably wouldn't be a bad one, even though I have done a couple of apple pie videos since then. One may very well be my old uh, recipe for uh, Dutch oven chicken and rice, perhaps. All right, and uh, great night to be up, to fire up the oven. Yeah, I, I understand it's cold out there and a lot of people are getting snow. Well, we've been lucky so far. I realize it's not going to last forever, but I'm doing my best to enjoy the weather out here in New York now. <laughs> um, which hasn't really been that bad. I mean, the temperature is now regularly getting around the freezing mark in the early mornings, and yet during, by the afternoon, it's still getting to uh, the 50s or so. I figure in another week or two, that will probably be gone. So as I said, I'm trying to uh, enjoy this as best as I can. I'm presuming I'm supposed to cook this at least until the apples soften. I better double check the video. I'm sorry, the recipe here, because this is not my recipe. Squeeze, okay, large, okay. Uh, and cook the cut apples for about five minutes. Well, that doesn't say very much, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. Then it says, pour the thickener over the apples and stir until well combined for a couple of minutes. Okay, well, that tells me something. All right, but with all of this uh, liquid here, I guess that's why it's talking about the slurry of the uh, cornstarch and lemon juice. So, I will do what it says. Lemon juice, yeah, you, it's very acidic. Will this affect the seasoning on the pan? Well, I certainly hope not, but I think we're about to find out. On the other hand, if it does affect the seasoning on the pan, I doubt it will be instant. So, this is what the recipe calls the magic thickener in that once it uh, cools off and bakes, the with this will give a nice thick uh, filling and not a running one. So I am uh, definitely looking forward to that. Also, lemon juice is a good thing because not only does it help to preserve the apples, but it will also activate the baking powder in the crust. The crust recipe I'm actually quite fond of. Uh, which is one that I kind of cobble together myself. You know, I do believe it's working, though. I, I would have to say that a lot of this liquid has already uh, disappeared or been absorbed or thickened. So we are uh, not, uh, yeah, we're off to a pretty decent start here already, in fact. I'm guessing I probably will not have to uh, stir these things much more. All right, from here, let me see. That's, 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 uh, okay, uh, over the, uh, okay. While it's the heat is still on, now we're talking about uh, brown sugar, white sugar, and sea salt. And the amounts the recipes call for are half a cup each of brown sugar and, uh, and white sugar. So, here is where things start to get yummy. <laughs> Means I gotta pull out. Where's my half cup? Oh, uh, no, um, don't have my half cup. 
Okay, now I'm gonna have to use two quarter cups. Here is one quarter cup of brown sugar. Yeah, they call this dark brown sugar. I would say this is not very dark. Oh, really, I have to fix that. Here is half a cup of brown sugar. Cover this quickly. And next, half a cup of white sugar. Then after this, once everything is uh, all melted in, we will then uh, take it off the heat. It says after this to let it cool, at which point, then, um, and I'm kind of, uh, I shouldn't say cheating, but kind of changing things in that I've got, a, I've got an ice bath uh, over there, sitting there on the uh, counter to help cool this off faster. It has to cool off so that the thickener will work, but yeah, I have to say, yeah, this is already starting to look like pie filling, if you ask me. Let me see if I can lower this a little bit for you folks so that you can get a better view, I hope, of the, uh, of the pan. Come on. There we go. That's not bad. Tighten this up. So anyway. Oh yeah, this is, especially with the sugar, this is definitely starting to smell like uh, apple pie. Right now. So far, I just have, as I said, the apples, uh, a little bit of lemon juice, and the brown sugar and white sugar. So, but oh yeah, we, oh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is definitely looking like apple pie filling already. We're probably about ready at this point. So, and it mentions you're supposed to add the, uh, see, add the uh, spices, you know, cinnamon, oh, oh, I forgot the kosher salt. Whoops, my bad. Gonna throw in a little bit of that. Not too much. There we are. It says I'm supposed to uh, remove it from the heat before adding the spices so that the spices don't either cook or burn. All right, so I will uh, take that advice, which means I'm going to put this into the bowl with the uh, ice bath and then mix in the spices and see if that works. But yeah, this is definitely looking like uh, apple pie filling already. So <laughs> supposedly it'll thicken when it cools. So I'm looking forward to this. All right, that means time to change our point of view again, I think. Let's move over here. Come on. Sorry about the uh, roller coaster once again, folks. Isn't that always the case? Okay, there we go. That's what we want here. Because I think you would rather see this than me. There we go. Now we're getting uh, a POV. That looks pretty good. Thank you for waiting as always. Uh, Mr. Nutmeg, oh yeah, and uh, roasted chestnuts today. Okay, the new ones have a big suction cup on them. Oh yeah, the apple cores, I guess. <laughs> uh, going into diabetic shock, I don't blame you at all for that. Okay, better turn off the heat. These things are bubbling, but as I said here, I've got an uh, ice bath. Um, so that it should hopefully help cool these things off. I still need to use a pot holder nonetheless to get this thing off the heat. And yeah, metal bowls, especially so that there isn't any shock. You know, not like a, if it was glass, I didn't want it to shatter or anything like that. Oh, I smell this already. Now, here. I don't see any reason why I can't just continue using the spatula. Well, let me move this out of the way so that you folks can at least have more of a close-up here. 
you know, you see how this thing is steaming here. It's definitely hot enough. So yeah, we have to cool this thing off. Actually, that's, yeah, that's right. I will uh, put in the spices and then as this is cooling off here, let's work on the pie crust. Uh, I have already prepared the dough for it. I just have to uh, roll out the pie crust. So that won't take very long. But to this, we are supposed to add, well, this, uh, this one just uses very basic spices. Uh, we're talking about some teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg. So here is where I'm so happy. I think I said this. Where did my measuring spoons go? Ugh, that's what I get for being disorganized. Okay, uh, was it last week? Maybe the week before? This is still wet, I can't use this. I'm gonna have to uh, improvise. But I mentioned before that I finally started grinding my own spices. And now that I've been done that, I am ne never going back. The intensity of the uh, of these spices um, is so much. It's, it's, it's incredible what a difference there is. And for that reason, I can only recommend to anybody, excuse me again, if you uh, really want to uh, give your uh, dishes some kick, you definitely should indeed ground your own spices, especially... Uh, when I started uh, using grinding nutmeg for the first time, didn't I have a, uh, one that was already in here? Oh, well. Okay, then I guess we'll have to do another one. Because I found out that nutmeg is just so easy to, uh, so easy to grind yourself here. In fact, here, here we are. It's as simple as this. And it's not, it's dry, so it's not going to, um, you know, so as you can see, the plane is uh, so much easier to clean here. There's no difficulty at all with that, is there? So there we go. We've got cinnamon and nutmeg mixed in. Plus all of that sugar, too. There we go. Now that we've done that, time to put this aside and uh, move on to part two, which is rolling out the dough. So I'm not gonna need these. That also means I have to move these things out of the way because I'm well, terribly disorganized. Probably always will be. I'm trying to move this as quickly as I can. Just move this into the background here so that there's plenty of room. I can put away this brown sugar and this kosher salt. Okay. There we go. And now we have room. So, one trick, uh, oh, this is brand new wax paper, nice, okay. Yeah, because again, since I've just moved out here, I had to replenish so many things. Unfortunately, I found out the hard way that having to replenish so many things, I seem to have misplaced at least a couple of uh, items that I really regret missing. Um, for instance, this is going to be my first time using a French style rolling pin. I had a regular marble rolling pin that in fact was a gift from mom. And I have been looking for it for the past couple of days, have not been able to find it. I'm worried that I may have somehow misplaced it or lost it during the move, or maybe I simply did not pack it up. So if that turns out to be the case, well, I'll be sad, obviously, but just, well, oh, come on, Ugh. just have to go on. There we go. Anyway, here is the dough. That's the other thing. Uh, I put this, you know, I have my own recipe for uh, apple pie dough specifically. It is in the recipe on my website, Cast Iron Chaos. Let's, let's see if we can 
separate this into two pieces here. There we go. And um, the dough recipe I'm actually quite proud of. It's something that, and what's more, uh, as I was getting ready for the live tonight, I put this together in the space of only about 20 minutes. I regret that I had not filmed it because I realized, you know, that would make a nice uh, YouTube video in itself, preparing homemade apple pie dough in only 20 minutes because it is so much better than the store-bought stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with the store-bought stuff. That's the thing. Um, <clears throat> I am not one of those people who will call you a sinner or say you don't deserve to be in the kitchen because you use store-bought ingredients or the like. No, that's, that's not how it works. But, I mean, it is, of course, partly that homemade is better and cheaper. It is, of course, a lot more labor-intensive which is the part that a lot of people, I do, and I do understand, um, have some issues with because for one reason or another. So my first time using a French style uh, rolling pin. Uh, this trick here I learned from our good old friend Alton Brown, by the way. Notice I used two sheets of wax paper rather than just simply one. And it does a good job here so that the uh, dough does not stick to the rolling pin. I mean, it's really just a matter of well, rolling it out. Yeah, I have to say I'm actually liking this rolling pin too. Boy. Uh, so I'm I am sorry if I if I do end up missing mom's rolling pin, but yeah. Definitely, there is something to be said for this uh, French style pin here. I like the shape of it. I was afraid that because it's not flat, that I would have trouble rolling out the dough. But as you can see, this is working without any real difficulty at all. Press this out a little bit more. Now we flip it. Right, yeah. You see the other side has some crinkles, but all I have to do is just straighten that out. There we go. And all I really have to do is roll the dough out until it is wider than the diameter of the pie pan. And I can see. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Much better. More pressure. All right. All right. Just keep going and going and going. I know, like the Energizer Bunny. So, yeah, I know. This rolling pin is nothing more than a piece of wood. But, uh, doing the job, I have to say, I'm liking this. Now let's again. And we will just keep on going. But I don't think it's going to be much longer already, folks. So I appreciate your patience so far. Also, um, I should be looking at the comments while I'm doing this. And I'm sorry, uh, North 7th Street looks like a good piece of self defense heart. Too. Well, there is that too, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm more of a pie eater than a pie maker, <laughs> and I don't blame you. As I said, these things are labor intensive, yes, but if you want to put forth the effort for it, it is certainly worth it, especially since in my case I moved away from the hometown of tabletop pies. And Table Talk, of course, is known pretty much all over the country um, as a plate, you know, those uh, inexpensive pies you get at the supermarket. Um, and they are pretty darn good. You have to, I can't deny that, store bought or otherwise. Yet, as I said, taking the, taking the time and effort to make your own pie is certainly worth it. For starters, 
Uh, again, there's nothing wrong with using a generic pie crust that they sell at the stores, you know, frozen pie crust. And you can use it in anything. Apple pie, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, chicken pot pie, and there's certainly nothing wrong with it. But nice thing about preparing your own dough is that you can tailor it to go with the pie. One of my not so fond memories of Thanksgiving would be going over to my grandmother's house. Not my Italian grandmother, who I've talked about and loved so much. Uh, my other grandmother on my father's side, she was unfortunately not the cook or baker that uh, my uh, dear Nana was. And I have to admit, she has since passed on, so <laughs> uh, I guess it's okay to say things like this. I do remember on Thanksgiving going there and eating a pie with a chalky and tasteless crust. I'm not sure if the crust was even underbaked, or, but it was definitely flavorless. And that memory was really what inspired me to do my best to make a crust that people will want to eat. And yeah, the more I think of it, I have to do a YouTube video preparing that crust, the one that I just made tonight, because it was not only did it only take 20 minutes, it's also a recipe that I'm proud of. As I said, look on my website and you will see it. And this is, among other things, it is a booze crust. I use apple liquor in the crust, along with cardamom and some sugar. So there's definitely some spice and some taste in the crust. And that's why I'm, um, as I said, rather proud of, that, of, this, of this recipe. I don't mind trying the other uh, pie filling recipe. I think we're just about done at this point. Ugh. But yeah, like you said, self-defense weapon. I could certainly see that too, so nonetheless. Let's compare this with the Lodge pie plate. Oh, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I'd say we are uh, ready here. So, thank you very much for your patience, folks. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, duh. Forgot to grease this. So, I had better do this nice and quick. Ugh. Always forget something. Uh, let me see. Here we are. <clears throat> Ugh. This looks like a job for Crisco Man. Hmm. Okay, get this greased. This will only take a few seconds at least. And that's a nice thing about the uh, Lodge pan. Because of the rough surface, it holds on to the seasoning. And you can definitely say that about, uh, you know, using uh, shortening on this uh, cast iron pie plate as well. There we go, that sure didn't take long. Now, if you'll excuse me, one thing though, I do have to very quickly rinse my hand off and then we'll finally have this part ready. Oh yeah, that's right, I'm gonna have to roll out the other parts, aren't I? You know, the crust. Um, I will skip the lattice crust. Uh, I've done a lattice crust, I'm not the best at it, but more importantly, it does require, again, a lot more effort. So this will be a nice and simple crust, both top and bottom. Okay, try to center this a little bit. And with that, let's see if we can get this thing on on the first try. And pull up. Hey, there we go. That actually turned out easier than I feared. But yeah, I will plug the recipe for my pie and my pie crust because as I said, I'm actually quite proud of it. Oh yeah, this actually went with no difficulty at all. This thing is filling up this nine inch pie plate, as I said, with no difficulty. 
to the point where even if there are gaps, well, you just simply take a little bit of dough and plug the gap. And there you go. Nothing to it. And a little bit over here. Boy, this sure wasn't hard. Okay. Meanwhile, we've got this here. You know, I think it may very well have worked. Uh, the ice bath, that is. Which means all I have to do now is fill the pie carefully. Oh, look at this. It's definitely thickened. There we go. So far, well, no, I shouldn't jinx myself. I mean, I've had enough, I know what you call it, chaos uh, in these live videos that I am not going to say a thing until the pie is completely done. But we can get this out of the way now. Spread this out for starters. There is, a, there sure is a lot of liquid here, although I have to say this does not look like it's runny. This looks like it is going to indeed have a nice gelled type of uh, consistency. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now that we've done that, not quite done yet because I have to roll out the top. But we're almost done, so I appreciate your patience, folks. Let me see. Um, this looks, yeah, I don't think I'll risk it. I'll roll out a couple of fresh sheets. But yeah, I really appreciate this little trick of using two sheets of wax paper. It definitely helps a lot to uh, make it easier to roll out the crust. Here comes the rest of it. Okay, don't want to, don't want to over knead it because we still want a flaky crust, which means let's Start pushing it down, and here we go again. I better get this out of the way. Don't want to knock the pie over. Oh, would I ever do something like that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Those of you who have been on this channel know that one of the uh, things about the chaos is Murphy's Law is the law. If anything can happen, it will, at the worst possible time. Of course, there are a lot of things that could happen now that, with any luck, will not. I mean, the weather is nice, and we're not having a blizzard or a thunderstorm here in New York, so there could be a power outage. Oh, no, now that I've said that, okay. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, maybe I better stop talking about things like that. <laughs> However, let me get back again to using this nice French style rolling pin. Yeah, I have to say I am sold on this rolling pin. As I said, this is my very first time using it. And I like it. Feel like it is definitely uh, helping to get this crust straightened out. And because it is only one single piece of wood, I don't feel like there is much of a possibility that things, this thing is going to break. Oh, I realize, you know, all this pressure on it probably will end up uh, cracking it at some point, but it's not the same as when I was using that marble rolling pin. Yeah, again, I inherited or mom gave that marble rolling pin to me as a present. And yeah, I, I do miss it. I'm probably still going to keep looking for it. 
nonetheless, mom has given me a lot of things and I inherited some nice things from her. More importantly, of course, the memories and the experiences. So losing the rolling pin is turning out to be not so bad. I don't know, maybe for all we know, we could say that mom is looking down and saying, well, it's about time you got rid of that thing. And here, you should use what the real bakers use. Uh, I can certainly see why. Uh, come on, a little more pressure. Uh. Just keep going, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure, maybe I've heard a rumor that they're actually going to try doing like a third Finding Nemo type of movie. I'm not sure. Maybe I heard incorrectly. Well, still, Finding Dory was all right. Finding Nemo was wonderful, yes, but even so, Finding Nemo is still not my all-time favorite Pixar movie. But maybe that's just me. It's a great, it's a wonderful movie, no denying that. Oh, as, as somebody once said, you know you're a parent when you have two addresses memorized. Your home address and... P. Sherman, what is it, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Uh, and I think we're just about done here. Because this is only a nine inch pie. If you look on YouTube, you'll see about three years ago, I went all out, you took out old Stumpy and made a huge 25 pound pie that was 15, inches across. Turned out pretty darn good, too. I think we are just about done at this point. All right, there we go. Okay, so there's a plug, I guess, for this new rolling pin. Yeah, I'm giving this a thumbs up. So if that's an unboxing review, there we go. Anyway, yeah, this, okay, there is definitely a lot of liquid in this. I hope that doesn't turn out to be a problem. It's supposed to thicken, though. Actually, I have to say it has thickened. But let's just look carefully, okay, carefully. There we go, as they said in The Princess Bride, gently. All right. <clears throat> Now comes the fun part. Oh, yeah. Got to do this one carefully. There we go. Hey, we got it. Pieces of wax paper here. All right. And that is that. Now it's only a matter of we're covering up the holes, which will not be difficult. There's so much dough here. All right. A little bit here, a little bit there. Means now we get to start crimping the edges of this pie. Move this down a, a little bit more for you folks. And I'll up a little. That's not bad, I think. Oh, okay, well, I'll let it. Oh, there's still plenty of time yet. However, regrettably, this pie is going to. Hmm, some of the fillings getting out. Regrettably, this pie is going to take about 55 oh, minutes to bake. So definitely I cannot keep the live going that long. All right, well, this is a lot of crust, that's for sure. And now, let's see what we can do about trying to put some kind of a design here. 
on the crust. Let me see. Oops. This is why, I, I guess, because this is a uh, designed as a pie plate, I think that's actually making it a little easier to um, crimp the edges here. Just keep going. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. All right, a little bit, bit by bit. This is a thick crust, quite frankly. Uh, I, well, again, this is only a nine inch pie plate as opposed to the 10 inch skillet that I had previously made uh, these pies with still, I'm liking the results so far, especially since we are almost done at this point. Only have two more steps to go. Okay, and those steps are, one is of course to poke a couple of holes in it. That's necessary to let off steam. Make any jokes you want about that. But it is a necessary step. Come on. There we go. Careful. There we go. That's what I wanted. You actually have some real vents this way. Ugh. And once this thing goes in the oven, I guess we can, well, talk cast iron because there's a lot more that can be said about the subject of baking in cast iron. Besides, I'm, I apologize. I have comments to catch up on, and I'm sorry about that. But as you can see, I've been kind of concentrating on doing this pie here. The next thing to do, of course, is the egg wash. For once, I didn't forget it. On the other hand, what I did forget is my basting brush, which is in one of these drawers here. Here it is. So, means, don't drop it. There we go. Actually, yeah, I'll toss a little bit of sugar, but just a little bit, into this egg. That might even be more than I expected. Oh well, it'll definitely sweeten up the crust. And besides, I found out I do not have uh, crystal baker sugar. And I'm, well, upset with myself for that. As I said, it's one of those things that I overlooked as I was moving, and I'm going to have to replenish it. Because, um, yeah, a well, number of things I found I left behind in my old kitchen, I either decided not to pack them or forgot to pack them or misplaced them, such as mom's rolling pin, I found as I moved, I had to replace my measuring cups and, and spoons. So I can only assume it was my own oversight because despite the fact that unfortunately things tended to disappear with all of the visitors, the untrustworthy visitors to my old place, I don't believe anybody would have stolen things like measuring cups. Almost all of my silverware was missing, but never mind. Okay, nonetheless, here we go with the egg wash. And with that, a little bit here, a little bit there. Don't want to plug up these holes. I mean, that's why they're here. All I have to do is brush on a nice light coating. And then some onto the outer crust. So there we go. 
I would say any professional baker would probably laugh at this at attempt at doing a pie, but I like the way it's turning out so far because the most important part will be the taste. And that I am definitely looking forward to. That's one reason why I consider myself an amateur, and I will always be an amateur. Even though I've been doing this for 10 years now. No, 12 years. Correction. I do believe it was in 2012, in fact, I baked my first apple pie. I used Alton Brown's Super Apple Pie Recipe. And it did turn out very good. It was very tasty. However, Alton Brown's recipe has a lot of esoteric ingredients, and there were a lot of things left over that I never would have used again, um, like the gelatin that he used to uh, build, you know, to uh, solidify the pie. He likes using um, grains of paradise in his pastry. Although I was introduced to Grains of Paradise by that, so that was something. And I took it upon myself to attempt to come up with my own apple pie recipe. And here is the result. This could, would have been a lot faster if I had not been live, but of course, <laughs> the whole point of this is to be live. So I still really don't have any complaints. Let me... Uh, yeah, okay. We'll get this in the oven, and then I'll finally be able to sit back and have a conversation with all of you lovely folks. So thank you again for your patience. Well, that means we get to turn this around again to the oven. Here we are. The oven is at 375 for the record. In we go. Okay. And that is the large pie plate. Phew. So there we go. I will, of course, have to give an un, uh, a reveal of the pie when it comes out of the oven, but I don't think I'm going to be here 15 minutes from now. I mean, we have been here about an hour, which is nice. And I do want to actually uh, do some chatting here because I have comments to catch up on. And I apologize very much. I've been concentrating on uh, getting this pie ready. Uh, however, nonetheless, the least I should do here instead of just this view. Let's move the camera over so that you can at least see some cast iron. <laughs> Which I guess is the least I could do. Right now, and that again is the old BSR Red Mountain number eight. I should probably even bring out a couple of other pieces for display. Request anyway. Memorizing addresses: two twenty one B Baker Street. Yes, of course, Sherlock Holmes. Although you tend to remember that one a little later when than being a kid when you start getting into the classics. If you do get into the classics, that is, and hopefully, excuse me, you do. But going back here, uh, my recipe called uh, Terry Sinchef. My recipe calls for three tablespoons of ice water. I use two, two tablespoons of ice water and one tablespoon of vodka I keep in the freezer. Yeah, let me comment again. As I said, that dough was made with booze. I did not use water when putting together that uh, pie dough. Um, because as I found out, or this is where the science comes in, as they say, the, uh, pie, you know, using water in your crust will, while it works, of course, it forms gluten. And then, uh, you have the risk of having a very dry and stiff and arguably tasteless pie crust. On the other hand, al uh, alcohol does not form gluten. And so as a result, that pie dough is much easier to shape. Um, you can use vodka, and I have used vodka in my pies. Vodka, of course, is tasteless, and that's useful for pretty much any kind of pie dough. Although, when doing apple pie in particular, I like using apple-flavored liquor, like apple brandy. It does a great job, and it certainly helps to add uh, taste to the crust. There's also about a teaspoon of cardamom mixed into the uh, pie dough recipe. So, as I said, I want to be sure this is a tasty crust. And in addition to all the butter, of course, that's mixed into the uh, 
uh, flour as we mix it, mix the pie dough. Um, this is a crust, and again, I'm quite proud of it because I feel that people will want to eat it. <laughs> uh, we do that. It's, you know, one. I like the cornstarch and the lemon. Yeah, yeah. That I'm going to have to remember that one as well from this recipe here. Uh, this recipe said again to put together a slurry of. Um, one quarter cup of uh, lemon juice and a tablespoon of cornstarch. And we certainly did see the results of it. That's why even though there was a lot of liquid in this, I guess all I can do is see whether or not it uh, produces a solid pie. And that's what I'm hoping. Okay. Uh, oh, I did forget to taste a slice. I apologize. I was moving around so fast. I really should have tasted a slice. Well, we can only see, um, now, uh, hello, Nesha's River Catfishing. Um, no, yeah, you definitely didn't miss the show, and it's nice to see you here. So thank you very much for that. Uh, you did it all wrong. Better give me that one and try, try again. Yeah, okay, I'll have to remember that one, Rick. I'll, next time I do this, I'll mail it to you, and then I'll have to uh, do another pie. I've used plastic wrap to roll out my pie crust. I will try wax paper next time. Yeah, like I said, now that was Terry Sinchak. Again, that trick of using two sheets of wax paper, that one came again from Alton Brown. So I'm, I'm glad uh, to uh, have learned that one. Put graham crackers and butter and brown sugar on top and call it good. I thought, well, if I had graham crackers, I didn't think of that until you just said that right now. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there's more control with this rolling pin. I agree, um, um, Alma Wasilewski. Um, yeah, I am sold on this rolling pin. Let me, in fact, let me uh, get this thing out and plug it again. This, again, is what they call the French-style rolling pin. And, yes, it is no more than a long stick of wood uh, that is uh, somewhat concave. Uh, but, boy, this thing handled well. I mean, I could handle this thing great. As you said, it felt like there was a lot more control here because, uh, it, you know, it's only one piece. I had my hands on it the entire time. So, yeah, I am sold on this thing. And if you have not tried this, I, I really recommend it because, as I said, I found this was easy. It was fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely giving a thumbs up on this uh, rolling pin. Okay, Cynthia, Val's Black Cat's Rules. I usually have a line out the door. Uh, I picked, I visited BC long ago. Do you use Crisco or what? Oh, Papa Dan, do you use Crisco or what to grease your pan for meatloaf? Um, with meatloaf, I would want to use, you know, Crisco would work. I might want to use like a meat-based grease, you know, like bacon grease or lard, for instance. Uh, I line my loaf pans with parchment paper, easier to lift out and clean up. Yeah, I, I don't blame you for that either. Um, but, oh, you're saying you made meatloaf with parchment paper? Well, I, yeah, I would think that would work. Uh, I have actually uh, taken the advice of some folks who say don't use a loaf pan to make meatloaf. Just use a wide, flat pan, like a skillet, for instance, so that that way the extra grease will run out of the meatloaf and collect in the pan. I can, I can see that. Um, okay, 221B Baker Street, uh, booby trap a chair. I passed through northern Louisiana. I'm just looking for comments here. Can I, oh yeah, hopefully they can get your eyes back in business. Yes, exactly, Papa Dan. Um, Mom and wife both room the pin over the top and crimp with a fork. Oh, yeah, we we're talking about when I was putting that crust together, I guess. I need to send my apple spice blend. Mm, sounds interesting. I'm certainly uh, interested in trying it. Mom used to put uh, Shadow Walker XM. Mom used to put sugar and cinnamon on the excess and give it to us kids as we waited for the pie. Yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, good luck in hunting. Papa Dan, Nesh's good looking hunting that's out of my range. Sometimes when you're passing through, let me know and I'll drink a cup of coffee with you. Uh, is this tea giving test kitchen thing? I'm trying out all of my recipes, K Clock. Well, um, I have a recipe for uh, apple pie that I quite like. This time I tried a recipe for 
uh, for uh, pre-cooking your pie filling in a cast iron skillet because it gave an excuse to, um, well, just that, to play with cast iron. Uh, so far, I'm liking the results, but the real question is whether this will be a nice solid pie or if it will be too runny, and I hope... Well, I, there are signs that this should be a good solid pie and that that filling should solidify. And I certainly hope that's the case. Um, a little disappointed to, uh, okay, the game is afoot. All right, I have this uh, Western scent. Okay, I want all, my, okay, I'll have to share my spice blend, says Val's Black Cat's Wolves. It's so easy to use and good in pumpkin pie too. Well, feel free to post it in the comments if you want. Uh, you know, after this uh, video is done, so. Okay, so I think we are about here. Uh, hello, Buckshot Mike, or MC. Picked up a large Dutch oven and found a little heart on it. Oh, yes, that's right. And guess where it sent me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the heart mark on the large cast iron Dutch oven. Yeah, that's an interesting one as well. The, and that come and... And thanks to the Cast Iron Cooking Group on Facebook, you know, with its 400,000 members, uh, who where pretty much anything in Cast Iron has shown up there at one time or another. But yes, the, ha the heart mark on the uh, large pans. Uh, that, of course, is just one of many maker's marks or mold marks that they use during production over the course of several decades. Um, they would uh, often, they, um, I'm in, not entirely sure if they were shift markers, namely if you saw that mark, that means it was made by somebody on second shift, or whether it was to identify any particular person. Uh, but either way, that's the reason why they put those little marks on the, on the large pans, and why a lot of times there might be an initial at the uh, at the six o'clock mark on a large pan as well, just a little letter S, or they call it the blob sometimes, this little round blob uh, on the bottom of the pan, or as uh, somebody, or as they noted, the heart. And really, the heart is nothing special in that respect. It was just another mark that they used. It was not anything special. However, because it's a heart, <laughs> cast iron collectors have noticed it. And now, of course, I have actually seen some of those eBay vendors trying to jack up the price. What a surprise. About a month or so ago, I saw a large Dutch oven on eBay with the heart mark on the lid and bottom of the uh, pot. And the guy was selling it for about $250 because it was the rare heart pan. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, your opinions are your own, my opinions are mine. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> anyway, that was the heart mark, yes. Uh, do you have an apple peeler? Yes, I do, in fact. Let me pull this thing out. As I mentioned, this thing here is my favorite unitasker. This was yet another thing my parents gave me as a gift. They bought this at Christmas tree shops for about 10 bucks several years ago. I think I've practically worn this thing out, in fact. And, and even though it was for my parents, I should probably get another one, in fact. But yeah, you've seen these things, and yeah, I love using this thing because I have to say this thing does a great job. It's an apple core peeler thingy, and uh, it really blows through apples like a breeze. Um, I can definitely recommend it if you seriously want to make a lot of apple pies with it. Um, it's cheaply made, yes. They, there are vintage ones out there in the field, including another form of apple peeler, which I saw and I tried, I tried restoring one of those things once. You, I'm sure some of you have seen a cast iron apple peel, a vintage one out there, where it does not actually, uh, you know, does not actually slice the apples, but it uh, has this little gadget or this little thing that really that uh, does a great job peeling the outside of the apples. I got one of those things once, spent a good couple of months trying to restore it, failed miserably. <laughs> Besides the fact that I could not sharpen the blade, could not get all the rust off of it, even with electrolysis, I ended up giving up. <laughs> 
But yes. Uh, anyway, the other thing is that Apple Core, of course, is something that Alton Brown would frown on because it's a unitasker. It does one thing. It pour, well, okay, two things. It cores and slices apples. <laughs> but as I said, if you like making apple pies, and yeah, I like making apple pies. I find it's really useful for that reason. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never tried an apple peeler. Looks fun. Yeah, and they're not expensive either. Of course, as they say, you get what you pay for. Like I said, my parents made that thing, uh, bought that thing for 10 bucks at Christmas tree shops. <laughs> you can turn a wood spoon if you crank it fast enough. <laughs> I'm going to look for lodges in, uh, in all, uh, I'm going to look for hearts on all lodge now. I need more excuses to buy more skillets. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. We have, on the Cast Iron Cooking Group, we have seen that heart mark on lodge skillets. Uh, at least once we saw it on one of their cornbread pans, you know, the corn stick pan with the seven uh, corn uh, sticks on it. Um, so you never know when or where it will show up. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, nice name. I sharpened the blade with a diamond grit stiletto sharpener. Oh, I see. So you must have uh, successfully restored one of those things. You did a lot better than I did then. Kudos to you, and I tip my hat to you for that. <laughs> Same as mine, but mine has a wing not to clamp under the table edge. Yeah, I've seen those, too. <laughs> I've never used it. I'm not big on desserts. Well, uh, yeah, baking is definitely an art in itself. I've done a fair amount of baking in that I've baked a lot of bunt cakes in my cast iron bunt pans. I like making pies in my pans and skillets. Uh, but I have failed miserably when it comes to doing things like artistic desserts. Um, a year or two ago, I tried making a gingerbread house, for instance. Um, I have the John Wright gingerbread mold, and baking the uh, gingerbread house was nice and easy. Decorating it was not. <laughs> I failed miserably at decorating that uh, that uh, gingerbread house. Likewise, I have a cast iron lamb cake mold, and I made a cake in it, but I am nowhere near any kind of a cake decorator. <laughs> that's why my cake decorations are usually pretty much putting a glaze on it, and that's about it. <laughs> don't don't look at me when it comes to really putting fancy frosting on a cake. Oh, I'm starting to smell apple pie in this kitchen. <laughs> you know, baking, it, that's yet another reason to try doing a, your own homemade apple pie. When it bakes in the oven, you, your oven, your whole home will become apple heaven. It will, I mean, I swear, if there is a scent that heaven smells like, it might be apple pie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, uh, sharpening tool usually used on serrated knives. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen one of those things. No, it just got dull, dull so I use the sharpening tool usually used on serrated knives. <laughs> well, if I ever take the time to try restoring it, I'll have to give it a try. Hello, Granny Graham. I had problems last week keeping a connection to the live. Howard, thing, yeah, I have not heard any complaints tonight. Well, thank you very much for that, which I guess means that the live feed has been reliable this time. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it also means that, uh, fortunately, then even though I'm just running this on Wi-Fi and not a uh, direct wired connection, it seems to be pretty stable nonetheless. Need a security screen on doors and windows. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I see what you mean about, the, about that. Yeah, that's one of many things I still have to work on, I will say that. However, the only windows that I do not have a curtain or, or shade on are here in the kitchen. So uh, all the other rooms in my home, I do have uh, privacy curtains on. In fact, trouble tore one of them down not too long after I moved in. And speaking of curtains, I'm sure folks saw trouble put on his little show during last week's live session. He's been quiet tonight. Uh, I haven't even seen him. I think he's curled up in the corner right now. Or I wonder if he's actually on my chair. No, he's not on my chair this time, which means he's probably curled up in the bedroom, I think. <laughs> 
Does trouble sleep in your big pots? <laughs> No, actually, he does not. But that's partly because my big pots have lids on them. <laughs> my crackhead cat does. <laughs> that's one thing I can say that Trouble has not done. I believe he did jump into one of my empty pots once. Um, but no, he has, yeah, I mean, he's walked across my cast iron rack, but he has not caused any real trouble there. <laughs> Unfortunately, he just causes trouble everywhere else. How'd the PC upgrade go? I'm still waiting for it. Um, that, I guess, yeah, that is why I had to redo the live video tonight. And yeah, I said I was going to do that. Um, yesterday, I took my PC into the shop for an upgrade because it needed it. I've been having problems, unfortunately. With, um, oh, I wonder if, I hope this pie isn't leaking. No, I don't think it is. Okay, let me uh, pause my uh, little story once again. Turn on the oven light. Let's take a look at how this uh, pie is coming out so far. That's, there we go. There is a few for you. Not bad. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it's starting to drip onto the oven bottom. Oh. Yep, I forgot something. I forgot to line the uh, lower rack with foil. <laughs> Always forget something. Oh, well, that just means I'll have to clean it up uh, tomorrow once it's all uh, cooled off. But anyway, I, oh, where is the fallout shelter sign? Right over there. <laughs> I finally hung that thing up. So slowly I'm making progress in this new home. Anyway, yesterday, again, I took my PC into the shop for an upgrade uh, because I have, in fact, been having Windows problems. It's gotten to the point where it has affected my video production, in fact. Uh, I've seen a couple of comments on my recent videos saying about the uh, sound is not the greatest, especially on my voiceovers. Yeah, that's partly because Windows is, is not properly detecting the microphone, unfortunately. So it finally got to the point where, as I said, I had to go to the shop. And of course, since every PC that comes out is obsolete after like about three months or so, it means, oh yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have to upgrade. <laughs> um, and I chose one that should get me a few years worth of use at least. Uh, and I'm still waiting for it. I got a call this morning from the guy saying that, well, he's trying to get the thing to work, but apparently he's having trouble getting the right processor to go with the motherboard. Yeah. Oh, because of Windows restrictions. Boy, that sounds familiar. So uh, eventually I will get that PC upgraded, though, uh, because among other things, I need it to uh, finish producing a couple of uh, videos right now. I, want, I need to get some edited videos out. I've got the unboxing review of the Star Wars pants, and I am in the process of doing my yearly turkey video. So as soon as I get my PC back, I will be able to work on that. But until then, I'm stuck with doing these live videos, which is not a bad thing. Also, um, I've been doing those short videos, uh, like the one I did yesterday on that uh, United States of uh, America pan. So, and of course, uh, Friday is um, is um, Veterans Day, and I hope to uh, do a video then as well, even if it's just a short video. Uh, I put a sheet pan on the rack under my pie. Yeah, that's what I forgot, unfortunately. So. It's already leaking onto the floor of the oven, so I am just going to have to clean it. Oh, well. I'm going to have to go to Mickey D's and get me some apple pie. <laughs> Can't say I blame you. Um, if I were to get a store-bought apple pie, I would probably go to uh, my local price chopper and get one from there. Uh, definitely not Wally World. Uh, one thing I've learned about Wally World, well, several things, is that do not get fresh meat and produce at Wally World. You can almost always get it at a better price at your local supermarket. Uh, likewise, the bakery section at Wally World is so-so, and it is, again, much better at your local supermarket. <laughs> uh, so for those reasons, if I were to uh, get a pie, I would probably go to my local supermarket and pay a little bit more. 
or just simply get like say a tabletop pie <laughs> which i mentioned a few minutes ago all right windows 10 is not my favorite is 11 any good i heard it was too cloud based well yeah windows 11 is basically windows 10 with a lot of window dressing pun intended in that just about everything i've seen on Windows 10 will work the same on Windows 11, but they've changed a lot of things so that it looks different, unfortunately. And of course, it gives them the excuse to force you to upgrade your hardware like I did, because again, I wanted to simply replace the motherboard on my PC, but nope, it's not compatible with Windows 11. The hardware specs, hardware specs just do not match the standards for Windows 11. Yeah, I know. And here we get into talking about things like planned obsolescence and how it's designed deliberately like that. Yeah, I know. But that's nothing we don't know already. Which, again, is a good excuse to cook in cast iron, which lasts forever. <laughs> and uh, they have not yet found a way to put planned obsolescence into cast iron. The closest I've seen with that is Lodge's Collector Series, which, of course, they, once they're out of print and Lodge discontinues them, they're gone. And then they become, they hope they become collector's items. Lodge has really been catering to the collector's market lately, haven't they? <laughs> Corey Clark, I've been collecting better Crocker cookbooks. Yeah, I can't say I blame you. Hello, uh, Cynthia Wesley. Hello, hello, just went on, oh, Mad Amulet, that's the one, Mad Amulet 1990, just went on my lunch break, yay, well, nice to see you here, it's always nice to see new faces here, so thank you very much for showing up, uh, I don't eat fast food until absolutely necessary, well, Chinese is my favorite fast food, yeah, 10 minutes, you wait 10 minutes, yeah, then you eat, and then 10 minutes later, you're hungry again, <laughs> I love Chinese food, yes, uh, the right to repair is a real issue with big companies. Yeah, I've, I've heard quite a bit about that, and I've been involved with some of that, too. Not the political stuff, but, uh, you know, um, because, well, things like having my car repaired, or uh, especially when dealing with like, things like uh, trying to get software to work on my, on my own computer. <laughs> it's a long and nasty subject that I will put aside for another time because right now I'm just too busy waiting for an apple pie. <laughs> Are there any Australian fans in the chat today? Uh, a few Aussies show up here once in a while. I think it's been a while since I've seen anyone here. So if you're from Oz, well, nice to see you. And again, thank you very much for showing up. We're just about done here, actually. We're past the hour and 20 minute mark. So uh, all I can do at this point is wait for this pie to finish. And I, and I promise I will show everybody the pie once it comes out of the oven. Let me give you, let's get, let's get one more shot of that pie. The oven light is still on anyway. And still, oh boy, despite the fact that, yeah, the thing is definitely dripping down there if you look in the bottom right, unfortunately. But nonetheless, looks like it's going to be worth it because, boy, yeah, I am liking the look of this pie. And I can only hope it tastes as well as it looks. I hope it's not too runny, but that's what we will find out when it's done. Still, there we go. And, of course, the reason why we made this pie is because, well, Thanksgiving's coming, folks. It is. Good God. Is it really only two weeks from tomorrow? Holy cow. I know. It's hard to believe. Or am I counting it right? No, I think that's right. Two weeks. Sheesh. Time sure does fly, doesn't it? But that's why I wanted to do the uh, apple pie, because that is one of the necessary things you have to have at Thanksgiving. That and the turkey, which I'm also working on. Um, of course, you can have anything you want on Thanksgiving. There's no absolute law requiring you to. And it's really just tradition more than anything else. I think I said this before, that for years in my old life, before I learned how to cook, we used to get Chinese food every Thanksgiving. You know, save the effort that way. And yeah, you know, I still don't regret that because, you know, it was nice. 
having the day to just relax and just order Chinese, and that was it. On the other hand, of course, since I have learned to cook, oh yeah, I have really enjoyed these Thanksgivings, um, making all of these Thanksgiving dishes. It was just last year, for instance, for the very first time, I made green bean casserole. I had never had it before. And I was surprised at how easy it was to make, and it was pretty darn tasty, too. I'm, I'm definitely making a point of preparing that again this year. <coughs> that, of course, and the turkey. <laughs> okay. I think we are uh, getting down to it nonetheless, though. I recently got the... Uh, the Pillsbury Bake Off Million Dollar Recipe Book. Well, congratulations for that, Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. Did that sugar turn to hard candy in that skillet? Hmm, that's a good question. Let's take let's take a look here. Um, you know what? I do believe it did. This definitely feels like it has uh, hardened and become like a glass type of shell here. In the center, it's still a little uh, soft yet. Hmm, tasty though. But yeah, well, it's not going to be that difficult to uh, <laughs> not going to be that difficult to clean. I just did a video last week, in fact, where I had another um, skillet that was that had hardened cooked sugar on it, and it was very, very easy to clean with the chainmail scrubber. So I'm not worried about cleaning this off at all. And I picked up high bush camp. Pine bush cranberries and made 10 pints of jelly last week. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's the other thing. In fact, I should probably do a short video about that. I've, I've talked about this one before. Cranberry sauce. I, like so many people, was, was one of those people who said, I don't like cranberry sauce until I started making it myself. And I learned that cranberry sauce is delicious. I've never since passed up on cranberry sauce, and I'm more than happy to uh, make and serve cranberry sauce with and on my turkey every Thanksgiving. Which also comes down to another uh, recipe um, or something that I put together myself. I'll plug it one last time, and then we'll be out. And that is razzleberry dressing from Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. If you look on my rest on my uh, YouTube channel, I have a recipe for that. Uh, because I'm quite proud of that one as well. But let's get on with this. I have to wait for a uh, wait for this pie to finish baking. Um, I'm thinking it'll probably be out of the oven by about oh maybe another half hour or so. But I'm not going to stand here and talk for another half hour. <laughs> anyway. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you for taking your time here. And I can see that people are slowly starting to uh, head out anyway, because it is a work night. It is a Wednesday. Can't deny that. But I have fun doing these live videos. And I say this every year because I enjoy it every year. I, I say this every week because I enjoy it every week. You know, having you folks here on these live videos are what make this so much fun. Uh, I do this mostly for fun, and that's really uh, largely because of you folks. So I can only thank you once again for this. Thank you to everybody. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Dana Ozark, for instance, and Celine seventy seven stars ninety nine. Hello to you, Shadow Walker XM. Oh yeah, I can I can definitely smell the pie. <laughs> I'd love to uh, one that eventually they're going to find some way. To transfer smells over the internet and yeah apple pie is certainly going to be one of them because oh man does this place smell good now and i'm so looking forward to trying the pie as well as showing it to you so i can only thank everybody uh for your time tonight and well what can i say as i said we've got uh veterans day coming in a couple of days i hope folks uh take a little bit of time to honor you know um, you know, just that the, the uh, those who have served not just uh, not just in our modern era, of course, but in all other all other times as well, because because it's also Armistice Day. You know, the day when World War One, the war to end all wars, ended. And I, of course, this is long before my time, but I have read a fair amount about World War One, and I think of all. The most tragic, well, 
all war is a tragedy. There's no denying that. But I mean, World War One may have been one of the most tragic because it was started solely for ridiculous political reasons. It cost so many millions of lives, and there is so much. Uh, anyway, yeah, so Friday is definitely a day to remember that. But let's also, uh, have, let's also uh, think some good thoughts, because as I said, Thanksgiving is coming in a couple of weeks. And what's more, a week from now, we'll be doing this all over again on Cast Iron Wednesday. So thank you very much, everybody. And thank you, everybody. And Paw Paw Dan, Mike M, Rick Stumbaugh, Val's Black Cats Rules, Corey Clark, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Nice seeing you here. And uh, thank you, everybody. And all I can say now is that, uh, well, again, we will uh, get together and we will do this again. So thank you, everybody. Have a good evening now. And see you all next Wednesday.